Welcome my beautifully artistic friends to Monet Cafe. Today's lesson is going to feature painting with emotion. Have you ever felt like you just needed to paint and you just kind of wanted to escape the challenges of life? Well join me in this tutorial where I try to capture that emotion and have my art reflect it. This is a beautiful photo. I want to give credit to Annette Meyer Atkins. She's part of our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook, and I got this from our member reference album. And I used it to create this painting that I call Mysterious Journey. Life often has those mysterious journeys, right? Uh, I know I've had those, but often those journeys can result in something beautiful, even if the path is dark for a while. Now this is going to be a great tutorial for beginners because I'm using relatively inexpensive materials. Uh, for this painting I'm using a piece of Arteza watercolor paper, but you can use whatever watercolor paper you have. I'm doing a sketch with just a charcoal pencil. And just so you know, another reason this is good for beginners is because this video is primarily in real time. So you can really see what I'm doing here. Um, and I wanted to mention too, I love it when I have a reference photo that's approximately the same dimensions and proportions as my drawing surface because I do a lot of what I call proportional measuring. I look at where things are, even on like the edges of the paper, like I know that road, if you look at the reference photo, the edge of the road um, basically is almost in the middle of the paper. Often, you know, we don't draw things correctly. We do what our mind says instead of what's really there. So I can kind of zone out and just pay attention to where things are in the photo uh, by looking kind of at the edges and making some marks. Uh, but at this point, you want to keep thing, ev everything very loose and energetic. That's one of the uh, points of this lesson and tutorial is to learn how to paint with emotion. Sometimes what helps is kind of in the situation I was in. I didn't have a lot of time. Now, if you have any watercolor, you just use what you have. I have a, a set of watercolors, my little travel palette here. You don't have to have as many colors as I have, and I like to keep a paper towel handy to wipe my brush while I'm cleaning between colors. And um, for this particular watercolor painting, under painting, it's going to be underneath the pastels and it really gives kind of a road map and a direction for your painting. Now I'm starting with the dark areas. I'm only wetting the parts of the painting that are going to be the darkest value. If you look at the reference photo, you can see what that is. It's mostly that those trees at the very end, uh, some of that little borderline of trees to the right in the middle, and then of course those grasses growing down at the base on the right side. So this is really just like all of the other lessons where I talk about value, where we are using color, but we're getting our values established first. Now, mixing your, pat your watercolor, um, you want to get a good dark. You don't want to just use black. So I have a recommendation of three colors that make a pretty good dark. It's really just red, blue, and green. Um, but I sometimes mix it up by using a little phthalo blue. You can change the colors and all of this color mixing will just get better the more you do it. But practice a lot. Don't expect to create uh, everything um, looking um, right to begin with. That's why we have to practice. Oh my goodness, I had to practice with watercolor. I had no idea what I was doing. I had seen somebody did a, a watercolor um, underpainting in another video tutorial years ago um, doing a pastel painting and they used watercolor underneath and I was probably like a lot of you guys, I, was, I had no idea what I was doing, I didn't even know what watercolors to use, but I just started playing and trying and um, it took a while, you know, and I, I got frustrated just like I know many other people do. Um, notice here too that I'm kind of using um, uh, I'm getting the colors down, but I'm using it as my brush runs out of a dark color. I'm kind of carrying it over to other areas. And again, that'll, that's something that will just get better the more that you do it. I'm using kind of just like a, a wider brush too. I like using the biggest brush possible uh, when I do the underpainting because we want that loose uh, and free look and feel. Now you'll notice already that watercolors dry lighter than when they go on. So already some of my darks are drying lighter. Um, so I just kind of keep reestablishing the darks. I think I did speed this up right here two times um, just so as not to make the video so long. Um, and I went ahead, I'm, I'm using mostly a green and blue kind of a value study right here. Uh, in a minute I, I do add some other colors. Now I'm just kind of wetting that sky area. The sky and the road are going to be the lightest things in the painting. But I'm just getting kind of like a, a nice uh, blue 
in the sky, kind of like a, a cool blue. Uh, the background field you can see is very warm and also very light. Uh, I'm getting a pretty quinacridone gold color that I love. It's kind of dirty, uh, and I do I lighten this up with the pastel when I'm done. But I'm you know just kind of trying to get the uh, general color palette and values in right now. Uh, watercolor too has just the beautiful um, uh, way of just staying so luminous if you if you don't overwork it. So there's some of those areas that I kind of want to keep that. Now I'm kind of redoing some areas of my road. You can constantly be correcting. I, again, I wanted that energy, that feel of like really moving down that road. So you want to get your curves and your sweeps right. Um, and uh, that gets more established with that feeling later in the painting. Now, I'm working on some of the warmer tones. And if you've watched many of my videos, you know that we usually have warmer uh, colors towards the foreground. I mean, you can obviously have some warmer tones in the background. That yellow field is a warmer color, but the warmer tones really pull your eye forward. So I'm kind of accentuating that in the underpainting, um, and it'll kind of like uh, have that feeling flowing through when I add the pastel. Now I'm using um, just one of those pretty, pretty blues. I think that's a phthalo blue. Um, or phthalo green, uh, but they're kind of a really punchy, uh, bolder color. Um, so again, I'm having fun with this watercolor. You don't have to go this far with a watercolor underpainting, uh, but I was just in the mood to paint. And sometimes when we just kind of pull something out and paint spontaneously, we create something that has a lot more life than our pre-planned paintings. Not always, but it's a good time. It's good to try that. Now, what I'm using here, after you finish the underpainting, I'm using Liquitex Clear Gesso. What this is going to do, and I know it's like a broken record if you've watched many of my videos, if we tried to add pastel right on top of this watercolor, it's not going to hold well. It needs some tooth to the paper, some grit. And Clear Gesso has that in it. It's, uh, I, I guess it's pumice something, but it, it has a little sandy grittiness to it. And when it dries, it makes an adequate surface to be able to apply pastel to. Now, the reason I use the clear gesso um, is, I've had people tell me one way or the other, I don't know which one's true, is that the regular gesso doesn't have the grit. I'm not positive on that. Um, I haven't really tried it that way. But the clear is clear. You can still see through it when you add it um, on top. Now, it is when you add the gesso, it is going to um, blend your underpainting, the watercolor that you've already put down a little bit. Um, but I like to uh, go ahead and paint almost as if I was painting with watercolor or acrylic. Notice how I'm applying the gesso not just in a straight uh, uh, swatches across it, you know, like evenly. I'm painting with it. I'm still making directional strokes. And I think that also adds to the um, spontaneous look and the more painterly feel. Uh, I'm pretty liberal with my gesso, as you can see here. I've got a decent amount, but I... I do kind of um, blend it in a little more. Now, I want to be careful on that road because it's lighter. Um, I do rinse my brush off before I uh, apply anything to that road. I didn't want to darken it up because as I was painting some of the darker areas with the gesso, it does keep some of that on the brush. So I don't want to get all of that, that dark color down on the road. So, um, so basically, this is just getting it all ready to be able to apply the pastels to. And you probably noticed my technique. I just put the gesso right on my brush <laughs> instead of um, putting it. Sometimes I'll put it in a little dish. But uh, this was a night where I just literally just had a few minutes to paint. I just snuck away into my studio while my husband was watching television. I had already made dinner. And uh, it was just a nice moment. I know probably some of you guys can relate. Art is really like therapy. It's just a, a beautiful place to be when the world is so crazy and, and uh, unruly at times. We can just uh, have our own little peaceful moment to escape. Now the gesso is dry at this point and it is time to start applying the pastels. Often I will pre-choose my pastels but I, as I've said, uh, this was kind of a spontaneous painting, just a little getaway from my my mind and and just a peaceful little time for me so I literally just grabbed some pastels that I had in various other uh, little tray palettes that I had for other paintings and uh, I did pretty much local color with this which means the color that is natural to the scene but I do accentuate 
um, some of the blues and purples and even some of the tealy greens of this you'll see as I go along uh, but right now I am uh, remember I mentioned before we can we can correct as we go and I noticed that road ha was sweeping a little bit more to the left than I had it I had it coming down too straight and I needed more of that sweeping motion there um, so I am just going to paint here this is real time I've got a combination of pastels. I let color uh, make my choice rather than type of pastel for the situation, which is what I often do. Um, so I just, even if it's a much softer pastel, I just try to give it a lighter touch so as not to fill up the tooth. And you don't have a lot of tooth to your surface when you use the um, uh, clear gesso. So you want to definitely keep a light touch. Uh, but I am just really having fun with this. This was such a relaxing time. I felt like I was only painting for about, oh, 10 minutes. Um, but uh, it actually ended up being, oh, I don't know, maybe a 30 to 40 minute painting. Um, notice that purple down there. That Those purple, it's almost like there's a shadow on the road. And see how those purple and blues, they just really give life to the painting. I mean, what if I just use just the greens and um golden colors and browns and grays and uh, a lot of times you can substitute purple for what you think might be a gray shadow um, of course always keeping in mind to use the right value get the value right is the most important thing all right so just enjoy this real-time painting i may pop in uh, i've got a lot to do today so i may not be able to give much more um, uh, verbal instruction here but i think uh, you will get the basic instruction from just watching the real-time footage. So enjoy guys and I will pop back in at the end.
Well, this was certainly a wonderful experience for me last night, just to have some escape time to paint. I pray that you try to do that. Um, just try to relax and enjoy the creative process. And here's the final painting, very loose and free and full of emotion and energy. I called it Mysterious Journey. And by the way, I do sell my art. I forget to say that a lot. So this one is available until I mark it sold on the description of this video. So I hope you learned a lot and most of all, just relaxed and enjoyed the creative process. As always, happy, happy painting.